women typically view romantic love as a necessity, making having someone a psychological and social shackle. Men love because they choose to, but subconsciously, women love because you feel you need to, you have to. You feel as though you have been you have been conditioned to believe as educated as you are, as accomplished as you are, as successful as you are, as strong as you are. You have been socially conditioned by fathers, mothers, church, society in general to believe that if you don't have a man, a significant other, there's something inherently wrong with you. So you, you're subconsciously loving out of uh, a necessity, whereas a man is loving out of choice. And love ought to be, it ought to always be out of choice. It ought never be out of necessity. Now, um, uh, cut to the chase. Um, Okay, women often think that men are seeing matters. Women often believe that men are seeing rom romantic matters, love matters from their perspective, from the woman's perspective. You think he's seeing things the same way you see them. You see, you see sex outside of marriage as the ultimate sign of your love and your devotion. And quite often, the sad reality is that he sees it as a game. Uh, there are usually two different agendas in the relationship, and the breakdown is at the point of the love concept. Your love concept as a woman is quite often different from the love concept of a man, especially an immature, undeveloped man. See, just because he's grown and has muscles and he's of age does not mean that he's a fully developed man internally. And the love concept is quite often very, very different. When the woman says, for instance, when the woman says, I love you, women typically mean, typically, because now women are getting a little treacherous, you know, as things go. But women typically mean when they say, I love you, they typically mean, you know, let's build a life together. Uh, let's get married. Let's have, uh, let's have children. Um, let's cuddle, let's be exclusive. I want to be your only and I want you to be my only. When a man says, I love you, he typically means let's have unmarried, unprotected sex for a little while until I get bored. See, that's where you're missing it at. You're missing it at the love concept. Your conception of love is quite different from the conception or the, what, what a man or typical man views as love is very different from what you're expecting and what you're thinking and what you're giving. Um, women typically equate, you know, when, when a woman gets become sexual, women equate sex with love. Women have sex because they want to prove love or they are trying to procure love. They're trying to make somebody love them, but it's always about love. Sex for women is just about all the time about love. Uh, and, and when she has sex, she believes that he must love me because he slept with me. Not so. A woman, you know, a woman has to understand that a man may not even like you. He may not even view you as attractive and still have sex with you. A man does not even have to view you as attractive to sleep with you. You ask any, any man in your life that will tell you the truth, they will tell you that they have slept with more women than you can imagine. They have slept with more women than you can imagine that they weren't even attracted to in terms of, you know, the visual, but they wanted the sex. Now, now look, look what the Bible says in, in Genesis. I won't read it, but in Genesis 29, 31 uh, through 35, there you find the, the story of, of Leah, Rachel, and Jacob. 
And when you, when you read the story, read the full context, you'll discover that Jacob really was attracted to Rachel and he wanted to marry. These are two sisters. He wanted to marry Rachel and he worked seven years for Rachel, but his father-in-law tricked him because he had an older girl by the name of Leah, but the Bible insinuates she wasn't that attractive. So Jacob didn't want Leah, he wanted Rachel, but on the wedding night, his father-in-law slipped Leah into the marital bed and he, you know, did what he did. So the marriage was, you know, sealed. So then he wakes up, he discovers that it's Leah, not Rachel. And then he has to work another seven years for Rachel, but he despised Leah. And the Bible says in verse 31 of Genesis 29, and when the Lord saw that Leah was hated, he opened her womb, but Rachel was barren. Leah kept having children for Jacob. She had this child, she had this child, she had this child. She kept having children for Jacob, but the Bible says that she was hated. Now, my question was, if he hated her, why was he still sleeping with her? Sex does not equal love. There are some of you that are watching tonight who are in positions right now where you have some man trying to tell you that you, if you sleep with him, it'll prove to him that you love him. If you, if you sleep with him, you'll do this for him. This game is not only run on little girls. This game is run on grown women. And sometimes even older women who've had this game run on them time and time and time again. But you, you can't put, wrap your mind around the fact that a man's concept of love is very different from yours. So a wise woman, and, and I'm just laying the foundation, then we're going to get down to the six things. A wise woman never falls in love. She always walks in love because love should never be something that happened accidentally or by mistake. Love should never be, good to see you, Pastor Crockett. Love should never be something that could end in injury or even possibly death. Love should always be something calculated and something that you understand and you walk into it. Never fall into it. Have you all invited some people to come in tonight? All right, watch this. Mistakes women make when they think or feel they're in love. Number one, when women feel that they are in love, which it really boils down many times to infatuation, she turns her intelligence off. When you feel like you're in love as a woman, you turn your intelligence off. This is how you have, I always say, you have a GED of a man that can manipulate a PhD of a woman. And don't tell me that's just a saying because I see it every day. I see women who are highly educated being manipulated by men that can barely read. It's because when a woman thinks that she's in love, she turns her intelligence off. She begins to ignore things because remember, she's viewing love as a need. She's viewing a relationship as a need. I need this to be whole, to be complete, to validate my womanhood, to, you know, I need this. So she turns her intelligence off to things that are, are clearly red flags. They're just waving everywhere. It just, but she doesn't want to see it, so she ignores it. it. It happens all the time. There's some of you right now who have turned your intelligence off. Turn your intelligence completely off for the sake of love. That's why R. Kelly says she, she took me back about a thousand times I, after I broke her heart about a thousand times. I mean, how many times does it take for somebody to break your heart to realize that they ain't supposed to handle your heart? But that's not just a song. There are a lot of you all in here who, who have allowed men to trample your heart, trample your emotions, break your soul, crush your soul time and time again. Why is that, Pastor? Because you turn your intelligence off. When a woman loves, she may go from a, a <laughs> well, let me not say that. Look in 2 Timothy 3, 6 and 7, it says, For of this sort are they which creep into houses and lead captive. Now watch this. Silly women laden with sins, led away with divers lusts. They have all of these desires, and they're led away by these desires. These men know what they desire, and they just kind of tempt them with their desires, and they lead them away. 
ever learning and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. They have a head full of knowledge with no application. You, you know everything in the world, but you can apply absolutely nothing. So it never manifests as fruit in your life. But he says of this sort are, are led captive silly women, silly women. And that term silly means a foolish woman or one who displays immaturity and the lack of dignity. When you should be more mature and smarter, you're still behaving like a little girl. You, you, you're 35 years old, but you're still behaving like a little freshman in college. These boys still running the same game on you that they ran on you when you were 18. Now you're 36. You're twice the age you were, but you're still being fooled by the same game because you're silly. You, 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 you lack maturity and you lack dignity. See, there's some things that you should not accept into your life. Just because of dignity's sake, you don't let a man disrespect you and, and then, you know, won't call you for four or five days and then you calling him on the sixth day. And he disrespected you. It's because you turn your intelligence off. You turn your intelligence off and you go from. What's my baby's name? Um, Michelle Obama, the first lady. That's a brilliant woman. You go from Michelle Obama or a Hillary Clinton to Marilyn Monroe. Do you see the difference? You can be you can be a Hillary Clinton, a Michelle Obama in your mind, but when you fall in love, you you turn into Marilyn Monroe. Okay, number two, when a woman when a woman when a woman thinks she's in love, and we've talked about this before in the father daughter talk. Um, she talks too much too soon. A man, all a man got to do is just blow your mind, just say the right stuff to you, call you wifey two or three times, and I can see myself spending my spending my life with you, and you know I love your kids. There's some brilliant. He ain't never even met your kids. He don't even know your children. And once once he breaks you down with stuff he knows you want to hear, and he plays the character that he knows you want to see. You go to spilling the beans. You go to running your mouth, just running your mouth. And he's taking in all of the information and he's playing you with sheet music that you provided. Because when you think you're in love or there's the possibility of love, you go to run in your mouth. Not understanding that the ammunition of the predator is would be the thoughts in the woman's mind. The more he knows of what's happening in here, the more powerful and more the more potent his game is. And he gets all of his ammo from you. You go ahead and put it all on Facebook. I don't know where y'all get that from. You, you got all your feelings out on Instagram. You're doing periscopes, just spilling all your emotions in the moment. And then you wonder how these dudes keep slipping into your life, playing you. You thinking this is the perfect guy and then every time you you left heartbroken, you talk too much, babe. You talk too much. You talk too much. See, women manipulate men visually. When a woman wants to manipulate a man, what does she do? She puts on a short dress, high heels, lipstick, uh, hair, what y'all call beat her face, whatever y'all call it. She knows what to do visually. You you manipulate men visually. Men almost have no defense for visual, you know. When a woman's sexuality is visual, woo, and then she's, you know, just pushing it in his face, man, that's, that's hard to deal with. A man lose, he turns his intelligence off then. But when a man wants to break a woman down, he breaks her down with words, the right words. And guess where he gets those words from? You. He learns what to tell you to break you down from you. You go to talking about how your ex-man did this to you and you wish he had been this and you wish he had been that. And he's just writing information. Now, next two days, he coming around playing that character for you because you talk too much. Talk too much. You got to shut up sometime. Number one, when you have to understand this, when, when you are embarking upon a relationship with a man, um, he shouldn't be, he's not interviewing you. You, should, you are interviewing him. The Bible does not say a woman that, that gets a husband obtains favor. The Bible says when a man finds a wife, he obtains favor. 
So I forget who it was that said this, but it was powerful. Said so when, 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 when you marry him or you engage him, you're doing him a favor. So you, you, the one that is doing, the one that is being interviewed is the one, is the one that is supposed to be doing the talking. But you just running off at the mouth, running off at the mouth, running off at the mouth. And the Bible says in Proverbs 13, 13 and 3, he that keeps his mouth keepeth his life. But he that openeth wide his lips shall have destruction. So standard rule is that I teach women is that when you're just starting to date a man, never allow a man to allow you to do most of the talking. Any man that will, will allow you to do most of the talking is either not a leader or he has something to hide. Any man that doesn't want to talk is either not a leader or he has something to hide. And if he's not a leader, he's not going to make a good husband. I know, you want, I know you want a man so bad you don't care that he's not a leader. But trust me, when you have children and those bills piled up, you're going you're gonna to want a leader. And if a man is not, if a man is not, doesn't have anything to talk about, he doesn't have a vision. He doesn't have a vision. A man that has a vision has, has a conversation. Any man that does not have anything to talk about with a woman that he's interested in, either is not a leader or he has something to hide. Number three, when a woman thinks she's in love, she gives too much too soon. She gives too much too soon. Some of y'all been dating this man for uh, three weeks and you, this man got your car keys. You've been knowing this man for a month and this man got a key to your house and you got children in this house. You don't know this man. And, and, uh, you don't know this man. And no man is supposed to have keys to your house unless you have his last name and a ring on your finger and some license to prove that y'all married. You got children in the house. You got a man with your keys to your house and you got babies in there and you just met this man. I mean, we've been dating for three months. You don't know nobody in no three months. You give too much too soon. You give too much too soon and see it's your nature as women. You're givers. Trust me, you're givers. But babe, you got to learn how to hold back on that. All of that giving is not for every man. That's for the right man. You're not supposed to be paying no dude's bills. No, no, dude, is a, no dude that you just met, you dating, he, he borrowing money from you. And you giving it to him? You're giving away too much too soon. You got to hold back, babe. You got to pull back on some of that stuff. Oh, Lord. See, because women start from a position of selflessness. Women are much more selfless than men. Men are quite often, especially undeveloped men, men that are, that are undeveloped up here, are quite often selfish. Men start at a position of selfishness, women at selflessness. Though, now listen to this very carefully. The woman should start from a position, now listen to this, because this is going to hit you like a ton of bricks right here. The woman should start, self-preservation is the first law of nature, protect your heart. There you go. The woman should start from a position of self-interest and then gradually move towards selflessness as the man proves to make her first and to honor her. You, you see, you, you jump into wanting to prove that you, you can be the, be the best woman in the world. Well, you want to be the best woman in the world for the right man. You don't want to be the best woman in the world for the worst man in the world or the worst men in the world. So you got to learn to move into these relationships from a position of self-interest and self-preservation, one of my babies just put. Stop leaping in trying to prove how selfless you can be with people who are generally selfish. Because trust me, a man will never stop taking from you. He'll never stop taking from you. You get, a, you get a little undeveloped, immature man, a boy in a grown man's skin, he'll never stop taking from you. The more you give, the more he's going to take, 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 until he's taken all that you have 
And for some of y'all, he's taken so much from you that you don't even want a man no more. Now you're looking at women. You, you're becoming one of these little plastic lesbians because you're mad with men because you keep making the wrong choices and you keep giving away too much too fast. That's why your heart keeps getting broken. And you can't find the right man because you're always preoccupied with the wrong man. You don't give yourself enough time. You, you, can't be, you can't be alone for a month. You get rid of one man, you got another one moving in the next three or four days. And he's the same kind of man that you just got rid of. And you're giving him everything. And you're wondering, why I can't get the right man? Because the wrong man is always filling the space. Who Jesus. Lord, help me. Woman often gives her heart, her time, her body, even before the man even says that y'all even exclusive. This man had even told you that he's exclusively with you. You can give this man your body, your heart, your time, your money. You gave away all of this here. Hoping, hoping. And some of y'all crazy enough think you can sex him in the marriage. You can't sex no man in the marriage. You know how much sex is out here? Ain't no man going to marry nobody for no sex. If a man's going to marry you, he's going to marry you because he see wifey character in you. And trust me, he ain't looking at wifey character when you roll around in the bed after a week of dating. Look what the Bible says in Matthew 7 and 6. She gives too much too soon to people who do not deserve it. Matthew 7 and 6 says, give not that which is holy unto the dogs, neither cast ye your pearls before swine, lest they trample them under their feet and turn again and rend or hurt you. Same food that you give all of your valuables, everything that is worth more than money, you give it to him, he tramples it under his feet and then turns around and hurts you, breaks your heart. You're giving away too much too fast. Um, number four, I only have six. When a woman thinks that she's in love, she checks out on her own life. You stop participating in your own life. You have a tendency to bury yourself in the fantasy that you think is a, is a love affair when it's really not a love affair. It's a game. And... A lot of y'all dropping out of school, you know, allowing this man to impregnate you, thinking he's going to be with you. You check out on your own life. You stop pursuing your goals. You, you, become, you become so preoccupied with trying to make this work. You become so preoccupied. Your full-time job is trying to make this work. You, you forgot about your, 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 your educational goals. You forgot about your career. You've forgotten about everything. You've checked out on life. Because modern women still believe that somehow a knight in shining armor is going to come riding in and save the day. Baby, just go check the numbers. Check the numbers, especially if you're a black woman. Or if you're interested in a black man, uh, look at how many are going to jail. Look at how many are currently gay and proud about it. Check the numbers. Check how many don't want a job. If you took one and gift wrapped it and brought it to his house and delivered it to him, he wouldn't take a job. And you mean to tell me in this kind of climate, you are going to check out on your life. You're going to stop pursuing your goals because you think you're in love with somebody. Number one, if you if you really in love with the right man, the right man is not going to allow you to cut yourself short. You do not have to lose you to have a marriage or to have some relationship. The right man will encourage you to pursue things that you didn't even dream of pursuing yourself. Not only is he going to encourage you to reach for your goals, he's going to show you that you can even do greater. But how many of you all fall in love, you get all emotional, you lose your mind, and then you just check out on your life. You stop going to work, you lose your job, you, you, you drop out of school when you should be graduated and, and making some money somewhere. You sitting around pregnant, begging a man to come see his child. Because you checked out on your life, begging a man to take care of his child. 
Baby, you're supposed to be in a position that you ain't got to beg nobody to take care of your child. You got to stop checking out. All right, all right. Bible says in Proverbs 25, 19, confidence in an unfaithful man in time of trouble is like a broken tooth and a foot out of joint, meaning it's going to hurt a lot and it ain't going nowhere. You check out on your life and you can depend on an unfaithful man, it's going to hurt a lot and it's not, you're not going to get anywhere on it. All right, number five, when a woman thinks she's in love, she settles for a project over a partner. When a woman thinks that she's in love, she will settle for a project of a man. I'm trying, Pastor Glasper. And she won't be patient enough to wait on a partner. See, that's what a lot of y'all got now. You got projects. You got somebody that you got to... Something to work on. You're getting your, you're getting your man that you, you can work on. You want to work on him. I know you don't have a job. I know you don't want to work, but I think I can change him. His mama couldn't change him. His mama couldn't change him. What makes you think you're so bad that you're going to change a man, a grown man? His mama couldn't make him do nothing. You got your project. See, projects are everywhere. I was telling that the other night. You can find a project. You go outside right now, wherever you at. Go out on the street, you can find a project walking down the street. But see, you got to wait on a partner. See, you, you find projects, but you attract partners. Everybody want a king, but don't nobody want to be a queen. See, when, when, when you live as a queen and you stop settling for these projects and you maintain your character, you'll attract the king. You attract what you are. You don't attract what you desire. You attract what you are. But see, most of y'all, a lot of y'all, should I say, are settling for projects because you just want any kind of man. A piece of man is better than no man at all. That's what they say. You can, you can drop a piece of cough in my driveway, uh, body and tires, but if it ain't got no engine, it ain't going nowhere. I need a whole car. An engine without a body, it ain't going nowhere. I need a whole car. If I'm going to go somewhere in it, I need a whole car. You don't need a half a man. You don't need a piece of man. And see some of y'all on here now, you got a little piece of man. You got a little piece of man. Just a little piece of man. He's, he's just a little piece of man. He ain't, he ain't even grown up enough to know to pull his pants up and stop his drawers from showing. And he's walking up down the street with you. Just a little piece of man. You got a project. But you need a partner. Project can't help you when times get tough. When bills back up, projects can't help you. All they can do is sit on the couch eating cereal with a wife beater. And somebody, you got that? Projects. Bible says in Amos 3 and 3, can two walk together except they be agreed? How you gonna go somewhere with somebody who's not even on the same frequency? See, partners are equal. That bring a contribution to the relationship. They're not just warm bodies in the wintertime. Not just sex when your hormones are raging. Partners bring contribution. And when you think you're in love, you will settle for a project. 2 Corinthians 6.14 says what? Be not unequally yoked together. Don't be unequally yoked together. That's the principle. In this context, he says, with unbelievers. But it goes deeper than that. How can you have penthouse vision and settle for a, a man that's happy in the basement? It's a project, babe. You believe you can change him. You can change him. If I told the women on here tonight that had men that they thought they could change and it went absolutely nowhere, you'd be amazed at how many women on here tonight that can tell you, babe, you can't change no man. He either he either is or he ain't. He either he either is or he ain't. You either got one or you don't have one. You do not need to settle for a project. Yeah, they try to marry what they think a man will be. They try to marry potential. He has great potential. Let me see it manifest. All right, now let me shut this down. Number six, and I'm done. When a woman thinks that she's in love, 
She hangs on too long, even when it's obviously the wrong situation. When a woman thinks she's in love, she will hang on and hang on and hang on through abuse, physical abuse, verbal abuse, emotional abuse. He can break her heart a thousand times and she'll keep taking him back, promising him that next time is going to be the last time. When a woman loves, she will hang on too long. And she'll hang on year after 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 year. And then she'll look around. She's lost all of her youth hanging on to fantasy. Only to have him. See, when men get older, they get more distinguished. When women get older, they get older. That's what society says. Women in Hollywood, older middle-aged women in Hollywood can barely find roles. Older man gets in Hollywood, the more roles he can get. So when a man gets older, he can go find him a younger woman. Waste up all of your life, you hanging on to fantasy, and then he leaves, you go find a younger woman, and she wants him. Because you hang on too long. It's no secret, man. It goes back to the number one point, you turn off your intelligence. How many times does a woman have to go out and sleep around on a man before he shuts her down? There's some men that are mature enough to work, try to work through it the first time. But there's very few men, very few that's going to try to work through it the first time. And even fewer that's going to go beyond one time. But how many women will tolerate a man sleeping around over and over and over and over and over and over and over again? And you still hanging on. Because in your mind, you don't believe you have a life without him. Whew, I thought y'all were going to leave me tonight. Y'all actually staying here with me for this, huh? She hangs on too long. It's bad to love something that won't love you back. I said it's bad to love something that won't love you back. And you're just hanging on, hoping for this man. You're just praying that this man finally get it. Mm -mm. It comes a point in time that you have to realize that it's just not working. And that you're losing your life for somebody that's not worth it. And you have to cut ties. It's better to cut your losses now than to sink all of your life into something or someone that never deserved you in the beginning and are too stupid to realize your value now. And you just hang it on. It's because you're hoping, you're hoping that he will be what you envisioned him being. But the reality is that, in most cases, it's not going to happen no time soon, if it ever happens. So, as a father would say to a daughter, if I were talking to one of my three girls tonight, and they were talking to me about a relationship with a man, and the relationship was not fulfilling them, the relationship was not making them happy. I would tell them tonight, look them in their eyes, and I would say to them, this should be your last night dealing with this individual.
it's time for you to cut ties with this individual and fall safely and securely in the arms of God and rediscover yourself. Because what happens is every time you have one of these toxic relationships, <clears throat> it poisons your self view. You lose sight of who you are. You begin to behave in ways that are beneath you. And you begin to forsake all of the things that are really important to you. Trying to hold on to a fantasy. So I love you all tonight. And I'm honestly praying for you. I'm honestly praying for you. That God will open your eyes and that God will give you the spirit of wisdom. God will give you the spirit of wisdom. Now, let me, um, let me close with this. There are many of you on here tonight, what you need, I know you're going to email me and I love, love for you to do so at PastorRCBlakes at gmail.com. There are many of you on here tonight. say what should I do I suggest to every woman that's on here tonight who's in a relationship that is obviously going nowhere and you you know that you're not really fulfilled but you turn your intelligence off and you're just hanging on you're trying to believe for the best you're praying that's not the way it goes. Let's talk.